Hello everyone, my name is Ambassador Professor David K. Ewan. It's a pleasure to meet all of you. And today I welcome our new audience from the United States. Welcome, this is our second season of Inspire and we look forward to doing more with the United States. We've been in Asia, the Middle East, Europe and Russia. And more recently also, we welcome our Latin American viewers as well. Again, my name is Ambassador Professor David Ewan, and I am from the Toka Enterprise 2061. We look forward to providing you great inspiration in way of correction and understanding. Get ready, we're going to start now. So we're going to talk about changing the way of thinking to become the person that God wants you to be. And the question relates to who we're going to be and what we're supposed to be doing. And the question shouldn't be asked of ourselves. The question should be asked to God because it's God who has the purpose for us. So that's where the confusion is. Who do you ask the question to? So we're going to talk about that today. So how do you change? Yes, you need to change. So your objective is, is to achieving goals in your life to make the most out of your life. So the question is, what do you need to correct to get on the right path? God will help you with that. I'm going to talk about some basic strategies to assist you with that. So how do you change your way of thinking to be in the right direction? So let's take a look at some scripture, for example. In Psalms 118.8, so that's chapter 118, verse 8, the scripture says, it is better to take refuge in the Lord than to trust in humans. As I said before, you're not going to ask yourself, you're going to be asking God what you should be doing. So do not rely on others to reach your goals. Their selfish desires are not for you, okay? So let me take a look at another scripture, which is in Proverbs 13, 16. So that's Proverbs chapter 13, verse 16. All who are prudent act with knowledge, but fools expose their folly. Well, there's three things that are related to that. It's a little bit more complicated, so I'm going to read Proverbs chapter 13, verse 16 again. All who are prudent act with knowledge, but fools expose their folly. And so for number one, I'll tell you that an investment in experience is mistakes. That's what experience is. It's an investment in experience. Those mistakes, <coughs> pardon me, develop knowledge. From knowledge comes wisdom. In Matthew chapter 17, verse 20, in Matthew chapter 17, verse 20, truly I tell you, if you have faith as small as a mustard seed, you can say to this mountain, move from here to there, and it will move. Nothing will be impossible for you. So don't let your own excuses stop you. And that's what happens in life. Number one, we forget that we should be asking God what we should be doing. And then when we figure it out, we come up with the excuses. These excuses aren't from God, they're from ourselves. So don't let your ex own excuses stop you. Now, let me tell you about a SMART goal. And when I say a SMART goal, I'm talking about S-M-A-R-T. It's a great acronym. So a SMART goal is a short statement that a person makes to lead them in the direction of what they want to, to accomplish. So again, SMART, S-M-A-R-T, S-M-A-R-T, SMART. So the S stands for specific. The M is measurable. The A is achievable. The R is relevant. The T is time bound. S-M-A-R-T. We're talking about the SMART goals. So let me tell you what, what that is. So the S for specific, that means a goal has to be specific toward a purpose with an expected result. It can't be generic. It needs to be very specific. If you can explain it, then you can understand it. If you can't explain it, then you're not able to understand it, which means the goal is not specific. So that's what you need to have is whatever goal it may be, it has to be specific, narrow it down. 
The next one, the M, measurable. M, measurable to show milestones and an end result. What I mean by to be able to show an end result is how can you quantify the fact that the goal has been reached? For example, for the Daniel 21 day fast, we know that the goal is complete on the 21st day because we count the three weeks. We count all the days during the 21 day fast. That is measurable. Um, how fast do you want to run in your running competition? Um, how far do you want to go? How many things do you want to do? Something that's measurable or countable. So that way we know what the different milestones are, the different levels of achievement, and how you know that you've completed the goal. The third one, A, achievable. So you have to choose the goal that's achievable in a way that is possible. I can't say that I'm going to go to the moon next week. That's not achievable. It's not realistic. So that's what we're talking about. A goal that's achievable is one that's realistic. Now, there might be a goal that I can achieve, but for some reason, that same goal is not achievable for another person. So it's different from person to person. So whatever goal you select, you have to determine if it's achievable for you. When I was younger, I could run fast. So I could have a specific goal that was measurable in terms of how fast I go in a race. Now, when I'm 80 years old, that goal is not achievable. So even over time, a goal that may have been achievable in the past for myself may not be achievable in the future. So we need to understand, is the goal that you desire, is it achievable? The next one, R, relevant. It has to be relevant to the purpose. We don't make goals just to make goals. It has to be relevant for a particular purpose in mind. And that is why uh, that is so important. God tells us that we have a purpose in mind. We have it in mind, but God has chosen it for us. And that's shown in Jeremiah 29, 11. Whatever that purpose is God has for us, our goals have to be relevant to that purpose. The last one, T, smart bound. What that means is the goal has a deadline. We don't have goals that we decide that we'll do, oh, someday I would like to do this. The goal must have a deadline. By the end of the year, this will happen. By the end of the week, this will happen. So a date needs to be set. So th these are five different attributes of goals. We call them SMART goals. Specific, measurable, achievable, relevant, and time bound. So this is a simple tool to help you create goals in your life. Now let's talk about some goal setting. As you read the Bible, you'll notice that the Bible has a certain set of vocabulary and a certain set of words. Well, there are biblical keywords for goal setting, and I will give them to you. Faith, humility, commitment, diligence, alignment with God's word and will, forethought, which is planning, and motivation. I'm going to read those again. Again, these are biblical keywords for goal setting. So write them down if you have a chance. Faith, humility, commitment, diligence, alignment with God's word and will, forethought, and pl which is planning, and motivation. So let's break that down. Number one, faith. We serve the almighty powerful God who can ac accomplish the impossible. There's nothing that he can't do. 
we can believe that he journeys with us and always has our best interest in mind. He is trustworthy and faithful. That's what we're talking about for faith. For number two, humility, humility. We never want to be in a position of demanding that things work out or that all our goals are accomplished exactly as we say. It doesn't always work that way. The Lord's will always trumps our own. We need to be sure our attitude is one of humility before our holy and mighty God. Remember, it's God that has the final say. The goals that are determined might be the desires of our heart, but we must first seek God to make sure that the goal is God's goal for us because each of us has a calling. So we need to understand that whatever journey we go through, God will take us there. Number three, commitment. We need to commit ourselves to the tasks at hand. We need to be motivated, organized, disciplined. We need not to give up. If we say we're going to do something, we need to do it. That's what commitment is. The next one is diligence. Number four, diligence. Goals are often require hard work. We need to be diligent in our effort. For every step forward, that is progress. For every second step and third step forward, that's even greater progress. That is diligence. The next one, five, perseverance. It is often true we will face setbacks and disappointments, but we need to persevere through rough times and to not give up. So I was talking before about moving forward. Sometimes we move forward, we step back a little, but then we can make two steps forward. Sometimes when we move forward, we need to readjust and do a lateral move so that we can go forward again. So we need to have that perseverance so that we can adjust in times of need so that we don't give up. Number six, alignment with God's word and will. As mentioned before, we are within the parameters of God's word, that's his promise, and his character. Remember, whatever goal that we make, it needs to be realistic to what we understand as God's word and his will, because God has a calling for us. So our purpose should be related to that. If it is not related to that, then we're not in alignment. So we must seek God first. Number seven, forethought and planning. Have we done the appropriate homework before starting our task? Have we counted the cost? So what we need to be able to do is think before we act. You know, it was Stephen R. Covey who wrote, uh, I believe in the book was called Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. And he said for himself, one of the most difficult challenges is one of his tips that he gave was seek first to understand and then to be understood. You know, in the Bible, there's scripture that talks about um, to be patient. Uh, that's part of uh, the fruits of the Spirit in Galatians chapter 5, verse 22 through 23. And so we need to pause for a bit and think before we act. The last one, number eight, motivation. We need to ask the hard questions. What is our goal and why? What's the incentive to move forward with a goal? Do we have selfish motives or are we operating with a healthy heart? And what I mean by a healthy heart, are we really doing the right ethical thing? And are we also following the purpose that God has in our lives? So let's talk about what we talked about. We talked about the biblical keywords for goal setting. So I've just gone over faith, humility, commitment, diligence, perseverance, alignment with God's word and will, forethought and planning, 
and motivation. These are eight items. So let's now talk about faith, humility, commitment, diligence, alignment with God's word and will, forethought and planning and motivation. Those are eight items. So as a quick review, I just want to go over once again what a SMART goal is. A SMART goal is a short term, uh, short statement that a person makes to lead them in the direction of what God wants them to accomplish. S-M-A-R-T, SMART goals. Remember, we talked about specific toward a purpose with an expected result. We talked about it being measurable to show milestones and the end result. We need to be able to quantify that the goal has been accomplished. We talked about achievable in a way that it is possible. It's a realistic goal. Um, we also talked about it being relevant to your purpose. And then we also talked about time bound, that uh, there's a deadline. It's time bound in a way that there's a deadline. So we've talked about setting goals in our lives. We provided some basic tips. We also talked about how God is in the center of everything, because if God is not in the center of everything, then you'll be surprised your goals aren't met. Okay, you're in a state of confusion. So that's my discussion with you today. I want to thank you for joining me on Inspire. My name is David Ewan. I'm the ambassador professor to the nations representing the United States. Uh, uh, once again, I welcome our audience from the United States joining us on our second season of Inspire. Um, and also very soon, Latin America will be part of the mix. Um, I want to continue to give thanks to our viewing audience in Asia, the Middle East, Europe, and Russia. My name is David Ewan, and this is Inspire.